Two nothing Tigers on top as we get ready for the seventh. Get your team's news first. Get the team stream app from Bleacher Report. You'll never miss another big moment with your team. Download team stream on the App Store or Google Play. Bottom third of the Tigers order in the seventh inning. Johnny Peralta, Alex Avila, and Omar Infante. Jared Parker turns to the top of the hill for the A's throw. 70 pitches through six innings and has kept his team in this game. With the Tigers on top 2 nothing, he's not looked at all in awe of the situation no, tonight. Not at all. He has really been comfortable. And unfortunately, Derek Norris allowed a couple of wild pitches to get past him in the third inning, and that contributed to the two runs. The second run scored on a wild pitch. Austin Jackson scored from third. Peralta has flied out to center field, grounded out to third base. I'm a firm believer that if a catcher can get to a ball, he should be able to block it. Wild pitches to me are those ones you can't get to. But Parker has that great sinking fastball, and if he's going to miss, he's going to miss in the dirt more often than not. So, as a catcher, you've got to anticipate balls in the dirt and get ready for them. Peralta hits it on the ground. Diving is Donaldson off his glove. It'll be run down by Drew and short left. But reaching at first base is Johnny Peralta. When it goes in the first pitch, a swing and a miss, and the throw down is not going to be in time. What a tough throw from Norris. Yeah, and they have a couple of guys that don't steal a lot of bases run tonight. Peralta had just one stolen base all season long. Ovila is out in front of the changeup. The look of a hit and run, the way he was swinging at that pitch. Yeah, it was a hit and run, and you can see Peralta peeks over his shoulder. Knows there's going to be a throw, but it's well off the mark. Tigers with four stolen bases in the series. They have three tonight. This will bounce in, knocked down by Norris. No advance for Peralta. Now Norris was lucky on that one as well. It was a curveball. He just kind of got a piece of it. The curveball might be the most difficult ball to block when it's thrown hard like this last one. You're never really sure where it's going to bounce. But you can see he didn't put a glove on it. He just kind of missed it, but it got part of him. Just stayed right there at home. They're lucky that Peralta didn't move up on that one. That's a strike, and it's one and two. It appears to me that Norris, more often than not tonight, has tried to backhand stuff more than he has flipping that glove underneath. Yeah, and you can't do that. You're just not going to catch a high percentage of those balls in dirt. You've got to block them. And that's the first thing a catcher needs to think about is keeping the ball in front of you. Avila takes and it evens at two and two. Well, Avila needs to pull the ball on the ground right here. At a minimum, move Peralta from second to third. And he's just got to think about having a pitch that he can pull on the right side. And if he sneaks it through the infield for a base hit, that's a bonus. Outside for ball three. Kurt Suzuki, the veteran, was traded midseason. And he was terrific at blocking balls in the dirt. He caught 72 games for the A's. Bob Melvin, a former catcher himself, really understood the value of Suzuki behind the plate, even though he wasn't contributing much with the bat. Vila strikes out. Parker needed that. Picks up his sixth K. One down. 
One out Peralta at second base and here's Omar Infante works out of the number nine spot but he's been aboard twice in the game. That skips him for ball one. Infante is single would score in the third inning after he singled walked and stole a base was left on in the fifth. Detroit has left four men on through the first six innings and they've got a two nothing advantage runner in scoring position and one out. That's a strike one and one and you see Wally Bell gave Parker a pretty good pitch there and he's been consistent he hasn't been one sided or the other and that pitch on that third base side of home plate has been a strike for Wally Bell all night long. Bluffing off the backside is Parker as Peralta returns to the bag. Second baseman Pennington close to the bag at second, keeping Peralta close to the bag. And Fonte takes ball two. Yeah, you want to make sure that you shorten Peralta's lead at second should there be a base hit. If you can shorten him up by two or three steps and there's a base hit, you got a shot to throw him out. Ball three, three and one. Another good at bat turned in here by the number nine man in Fonte. And Derek Norris, the catcher, is going to go out and talk to Jared Parker. Yeah, this is a two-fold trip right here. Out to talk a little strategy about how they're going to attack Infante, but it also gives Cook another couple of extra pitches. Cook is a strikeout pitcher, and Bob Melvin might go to him with Jackson, the next batter. Parker in game one went six and a third. That's where he's at right now. Four three ball count of the night. And Fonte lines it into right field, a base hit. Peralta had to wait to make sure that wasn't caught, and he stops at third. Throw is wild, but backed up by the pitcher, Parker. As Infante in a low liner that just got up over the outstretched glove of Cliff Pennington at second base, and it's first and third now for the Tigers. Yeah, Peralta had to freeze to make sure this ball is not caught. So he doesn't get a jump. Watch him at second base. It's a line drive, and he holds his ground to make sure that ball gets to the outfield. And that's why he's not able to score on the single to right. No, Bob. Bob Melvin has Cook ready. New pitcher is Ryan Cook. His fourth appearance in this series and the strikeouts, four strikeouts in three and a third. And he's got a strikeout candidate in the plate at the plate in Austin Jackson. Pitched in games two, three, and four, and here he is in game five. Parker can just look on now as Ryan Cook. With runners at first and third and one out. First pitch to Jackson is a strike. Nasty slider, real tight spin, difficult to identify. With 23 pitches in game two, 14 in game three, and 16 in game four. For the first and quickly back to the bag is Infante. Ryan Cook inherited 25 runners during the season, eight of them scored. He inherits two runners here in the seventh inning and trying to keep this a two run deficit for the A's. This is lined into right center field, a base hit. From third comes Peralta to score. On to third, the throw there and safe at third base. 
There's the overslid the bag that time is Infante and the Tigers take a three nothing lead. So first and third again with one out Quinton Berry the batter. Left to third look to first doesn't throw to either locale. Barry a double in the first. Had a sacrifice bunt in the third. He fouled out in the fifth inning. Outside for ball one. Boy, Jackson really hit that ball hard, and it was a good fastball. Might have been low on the outer half, and he stayed right on it and drilled it over the second baseman's head. Second hit, second RBI of the game for Austin Jackson, the top of the order. Getting it started here for the Detroit Tigers. As the pitch will miss again, and Cook falls behind 2 0. Oh. Finally, some people on base, likely for Cabrera, who waits on deck. Fonte at third, Jackson at first. Ball three. Barry taken all the way, takes ball four, and the bases will be loaded. So Cook has come in and given up an RBI single and now a walk. Well, Miguel Cabrera coming up, and this will be the fourth time he's batted. He's 0 for 3. Three, four, and five hitters have had trouble in this series, and look at their numbers in the ALDS. Yeah, and you can see that they have been shut down very effectively. Just two RBIs. They haven't had many opportunities with runners on, and now Cabrera will bat with the bases loaded and one out. It is only grand slam of the season against Oakland this year, part of a six RBI ball game. We're wondering about the uh, amount of times Cook has been used against the fourth time of the series. He's appeared. He pitched in three straight games, four times in the regular season. Two runs in four innings pitch. There is action behind him as Jerry Blevins up in the pen. But in a big jam here. Cabrera batting, bases loaded, Tigers already on top. And that's strike one. Cabrera tap foul and he's down 0 2. We mentioned one grand slam this season. It came against Jesse Chavez on the 18th of September at Detroit. And he has been a run producing machine all season long, wrapped up the Triple Crown. 139 ribbies during the regular season. And he gets hit to drive in another Tigers run. Tigers will take a 4 0 lead. So he had gotten ahead of Cabrera 0 and 2, and he brings a pitch inside that hits Cabrera to get an RBI. And it's 4 0 Tigers. And the base is filled with Tigers with one out in the inning and a new pitcher for the A's, Jerry Blevins, into the game. Levins pitched in last night's game. He faced five batters and picked up six outs. He got a double play off the bat of Prince Field of the batter he's going to face with the bases loaded here. Regular season was a good one, and Levins has really developed into a reliable reliever. Fastball slider and a good changeup. He's in a jam right now. Got those six out on six outs on just 11 pitches in last night's outing. Very impressive, and the A's need him to be. Again tonight, Prince Fielder batting with the bases loaded. And Fielder takes a look at ball one. Fielder's grounded out to third, struck out, fouled out.
Jared Parker charged with the four runs tonight. Ryan Cook responsible for the men on. Two and zero. Oh. For Justin Verlander, he doesn't mind at the moment his team scoring runs. Looking for more, 2-0. That's a strike, two and one. And obviously, Blevins with Fielder at the plate now has really got to be able to get that breaking ball over to Fielder. When he's behind, you can see Evan Scrivener quickly begins to loosen up for Oakland. Elevates and chases on a pitch that was up near his chin, two and two. Base is loaded for the Tigers, one out of the inning, two two pitch to Prince Fielder. Fielder hits a fly ball to center field. Chris but started back. Now he comes in and it'll fall for a hit. From third, Jackson will score and the Tigers take a 5 0 lead. Coco Chris began that first step was back and it lands in shallow center field. Fielder drives in a run and the Tigers lead it 5 0. Eighth member of the Tigers to bat here in the seventh inning is Delman Young and he lines one off the glove. Of Stephen Drew it short into left scoring from third is Barry and the Tigers take a six nothing lead they're opening up this game number five. You just wonder if the magic has come to an end for Oakland. This ball was a potential double play ball that Drew goes down to the backhand. How about Number 12. He plays the short hop but it just skips off his glove. If he makes that grab, it's going to be an easy double play, but the Tigers have kicked the door wide open here in the seventh. And they charge an error to Stephen Drew at shortstop. Bases reloaded again for the Tigers. And Andy Dirks with the infield in all the way around. Ninth member for Detroit to bat in the inning and a ground ball to second base. Coming home is Pennington and out there with force out and the second out of the inning. With the infield hit off the glove of Josh Donaldson at third base, it's got all this started. Just a two nothing game coming into this in the seventh inning. The Tigers have scored four times so far, and they're looking for more. The largest deficit the A's came back in this season was four runs. They trail by six right now. Peralta takes the strike and it's one and one. Yeah, six runs a deep hole to dig your way out of, especially when you're facing Justin Verlander. In an elimination game, Verlander has had all of his pitches working, and now you're behind by six. Working towards 30 minutes, sitting in the dugout, Verlander up and down to the clubhouse. As his team has collected four runs so far in the top half of the seventh inning. Loop to center field, crisp coming in. Coco will make the catch that will end the inning. But it's a big one for the Detroit Tigers. They score four times. Seventh inning stretch, six nothing, Tigers.